my name is Patrick Connor, and uh, as for myself, uh, after finishing my PhD, uh, my career has been divided between the academic world and the museum world and the commercial world. And I first got interested in this subject about 40 years ago when I was a young museum curator working on what had formerly been a royal palace built 200 years ago, which was full of Chinese items exported from China. And in particular, I got interested in paintings which illustrated the trade between China and the West uh, two or three hundred years ago. And that's really the origin of this book, which is called The Hongs of Canton. Western merchants in South China from 1700 to 1900 as seen in Chinese export paintings. It's all historical painting done between 250 and 150 years ago. They're paintings all done by Chinese artists, very largely in the south of China, in Guangdong, in uh, Guangzhou in particular, done for the Westerners. And what's interesting is the way in which these paintings developed as styles changed, styles changed in Europe, the demand altered, and these Chinese artists became very skilled at adapting their paintings to suit the new fashions in Europe. So they were able to change their style, change their subject matter, change the way in which the pictures were painted, even the, the medium which was used, oil painting, water-based painting, painting on glass, to suit the prevailing fashions of the time. So they were the most skilled artists in changing to suit the prevailing fashion of the importers. And they were in a particular spot, Guangzhou, which for many decades was the only place where the Westerners were allowed to trade. So all of the trade between China and the West came through this one port in the south of China and that's why this group of artists was located there. And having worked as a museum curator, I then came here to the Martin Gregory Gallery in London, where I'm sitting, a gallery specialising in paintings relating to China, to the history of China, and especially paintings by Chinese artists, Cantonese artists from South China, showing what life was like in those times, the places where they traded, the portraits of the people, the ships, the buildings, the landscapes, the gardens, the people, the costumes. All the different aspects of Chinese life which were painted by these artists who wanted to produce paintings which were acceptable to the Westerners who came to trade in Canton, Guangzhou, Guangzhou being the only place where the Westerners could trade. So this seemed to be, to be a subject which hadn't really been tackled before and the advantage of writing the book from this point of view was that this gallery had acquired and passed on a large number of these paintings and had a big stock of images. So one had the basis of writing a book which is essentially a short history of uh, trading relations between China and the West illustrated by these Chinese export artists who were so good at illustrating in detail the things which they saw. So that's really what the book is about. I think there are for a start, there are a number of paintings which have never been published before, never been illustrated before. And I think it's also a new angle to illustrate uh, the history of the period through the eyes of these Chinese artists and in some cases through the eyes of the Western artists.
I think they show us things, they bring the period to life, they show us vivid details in a way that historical documents don't. So I think, yes, there are new pictures, uh, and in particular, it's a new approach to looking at history through the eyes of these artists. Well, we're looking uh, first of all at the China trade in general, at the way in which uh, the trade at Canton developed. We're looking at other places in the Pearl River Delta that were involved, the anchorage at Wampur, the uh, Macau, the settlement at Macau, um, the Pearl River Delta in general. And then we see how the Western countries began to trade, in some cases had to stop trading again, the Americans arrive. New artistic techniques arise. The Chinese artists start painting in oils as well as water-based paint, which was a new thing in Chinese painting. Uh, we get wallpaper. We start looking at the shopping streets, the luxury goods that could be brought could be brought home from Canton. And then there are the fires, the great fires which were illustrated by these artists, and the aftermath, the changes in relations between China and the Western trading nations. They get better, then they get worse. We get the two opium wars, which are reflected in various ways in the Chinese paintings which we see here. And then after the Opium Wars, after the wars, we get the building of Xiamen Island, we get the uh, development of Hong Kong, and we get other changes in Chinese export painting Then at the end of the century, we find photography comes along and the Chinese export artists manage to use photography in various interesting ways uh, in their own painting. Photography is in some ways a rival to the artists, but the Chinese export artists were generally able to use photography to incorporate into their own paintings. And it's not just about the place Guangzhou, uh, it also involves the personalities, the traders, the Chinese merchants, the Westerners with whom they dealt, the various artists concerned, the Chinese artists, one or two Western artists too. And so it's about much more, I would think, than a particular place. It's also about uh, changing a social life in Canton, the way in which Canton uh, developed in the 50s and 60s, very different from what it had been in the earlier period. The East India Company loses its monopoly, a new kind of trader comes in, women and children are allowed into Canton. It's a wonderful and interesting period with many ups and many downs, and it's something that I think should be uh, of great interest to everybody and which certainly in the West um, we don't really study enough. This is about a trial that took place in 1807, a trial of British seamen from the ship called the Neptune. And on one of their rare days off, they'd come up to Canton, they got involved in a fight, and the next day uh, one of the several Chinese people who'd been injured died of his injuries. And so all the sailors from the ship were put on trial so that it could be discovered who was responsible. And this is a wonderful view of the interior of the British Hong in which the trial took place. And we can see the Chinese magistrates, we can see the Western merchants, we can see the Chinese merchants.
and they're all individually painted so we can recognize each one. And then there's a huge crowd of people behind, mostly Chinese, but with a few Westerners wearing their typical Western hats. And um, it's a wonderful commemoration of a very interesting event, which was in fact resolved rather cleverly. Uh, nobody actually admitted their guilt, but one sailor was put forward by his captain as the most troublesome of all. He was given a small fine and the whole thing was resolved. If only uh, other episodes in uh, the relationship between China and the West uh, could have been resolved so easily. So this is a set of four pictures of the Great Fire of 1822. Now, there were lots of fires in Guangzhou. The streets were very close together. It was easy for the flames to jump from one side to the other. But this was a particularly serious fire that started in a baker's shop to the north of the city. The wind blew the flames, uh, destroying large numbers of houses and shops and finally destroying most of the Western bases, the Hongs as they were called themselves. And uh, you can see very vividly in these detailed pictures First of all, the Hongs as they were before the fire. Then in the next picture we see the fire just beginning to appear and the moon's up above. It's almost a, a romantic scene if it wasn't so, uh, so worrying. Then we get the fire at its height with these dark, cloudy, smoky skies and the furious red flames. And the Westerners have had to retreat onto junks and other boats in the harbour. They've pulled out as many of the goods from the factories themselves as they possibly can. And the wind has got up, the boats are bobbing up and down. And then finally, the fourth scene, we see the ruins of the factory still smouldering, still a bit of smoke coming up. And they will all have to be rebuilt. And the whole fire and the process of the fire is represented in tremendous, lively, detail. Um, it, it's an extraordinary series of paintings. So this is the book, The Hongs of Canton by Patrick Connor. And if you're interested in the subject, uh, both the history of the period and the art of the period, then there's more to be discovered in this book.